Today we're going to make a rainbow using Blender. Hey guys, welcome to CG Cowboy, I'm Dale Forbes, and today we're going to make a very simple rainbow, but we're going to make it in a way that we can adjust it. We can change the shape, we can change the size, the illumination, to fit whatever scene that we want to put it in. We'll start with a simple plane. We'll give it some geometry, and then give it some shape in a way that will make it easy for us to change depending on our scene. From there we'll give it the colors, then put it against the backdrop so we can make some final tweaks. Okay, so surprise, surprise, what are we going to do first? We are going to get rid of our cube. So X to delete, we are not making a rainbow out of a cube. I'm actually going to get rid of the lamp too, X to delete, and hit numpad 7 to go into top view. So we're going to make this in a way where we can uh, flexibly reshape it, resize it later on. So don't worry about the exact coordinates here, and you'll, you'll see what I mean as we go. So I'm going to start with a plane, shift A, add a plane, S, X to scale along the X axis. Just to start, let's scale it about the size of the grid. Again, not to be exact here. S, Y to scale along the Y axis, make it somewhat proportional. And let's just go with that. All right, so let's give it some geometry because we're going to want some curve to this probably, depending on the scene. But yeah, let's do that for this one. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. Control R to start some loop cuts, and then scroll the mouse wheel till I get a pretty evenly shaped square cut here. Click a couple times to lock that in. A a couple times to make sure all the vertices are selected. And then W to bring up the menu and subdivide again. Now T to bring up the sidebar so we can add a couple more cuts. Not a lot, this is plenty for what we're going for here. Tab to go in Go back into object mode, T to kill the sidebar, and there's our geometry. That's pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and UV unwrap this. So grab the corner, slide it over, give us another window, bring up the UV image editor, and then tab back into edit mode. Make sure all the vertices are selected. So hit A a couple times if you have to. U to UV unwrap and we're going to project from view with bounds and the reason we're going to do that is we want to fill up this whole grid and that's going to help us assign the colors and, and have a lot more control over the the width and the position of the the different colors that are, are going to span the width of the the rainbow all right so tab back in object mode I'm going to leave this window open I'll, I'll just move it over a little bit but I'm going to leave this open to uh, illustrate something here in a second so pull this up so we can start using this bottom window as our node editor and start a new material. All right, so I'm gonna select my diffuse shader because we're gonna use an emission shader. So to change that node, shift S and change it to emission. And then let's start adding some other nodes. So we UV unwrap this, so we wanna add a texture coordinate. Shift A to add a node, input, texture coordinate to allow us to use the UV coordinates and we're going to use a gradient texture where's our gradient gradient and we're going to feed that into the color ramp which is going to have our colors all right what happens if I drag that guy over nothing doesn't automatically move it for me that's all right all right, so load these guys in, and this is where I'm going to keep those main color points of the rainbow. So I used four because this is the look that I was going for. Tons and tons of reference photos out there, but this was a nice close-up, and I could see the red to orange, a little yellow, green, blue, purple, lavender in here. And uh, whatever you're going for, uh, you may use different colors. This is uh, just the reference that uh, I'm going for here. So I used four control points. So to add two more, hit plus a couple times, space these out evenly. And on the left, we're going to start with the red, all the way up on the value, come down to our red. The next one was all the way up on the value, right between our yellow, slight bit of green, and then all the way up on the value, a little blue, and right about there, and then ending with our lavender. All right, so now if I go ahead and do a Shift Z to render this out, 
I see the colors are there and they're spanning the whole rainbow, but they're spanning in the wrong direction. So I want this to go up and down. And this is why I left the window here. I'm going to shift Z back in a solid view, tab in edit mode, and all my vertices are selected. If they're not, hit A a couple times. And over here in my UV window, I want to rotate this 90 degrees to get those colors going in the right direction. So R, 90, enter. Now, tab back in, back in object mode, shift C for render view, and now I'm looking at the colors going in the right direction. So the only other thing that I would change here is I need a, a softer transition between these middle colors here. Now we'll take care of the edges in a minute, but at least to soften that transition in the middle, let's change this linear interpolation to a B spline. And now you can see that's a heck of a lot softer and, and that's what we want to go for. All right, I'm done UV unwrapping this, so let's go ahead and slide this over to kill that window. And let's change the world here to a sky and uh, get a little bit better background to work with as we're figuring out what to do with the rainbow. Much, much better. All right, so let's go ahead and start giving this some shape. And this is the important part. Shift C back into solid view. Now I'm going to bring this down if I can grab it. And to give it the shape, we want to give it shape in a way that we can leave our rainbow intact as far as its coordinates. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'll show you. It's numpad 7, and let's use a curve, Bezier curve circle as our um, shape that we want to use to shape the rainbow. Scale it up, size of the grid. It's not important to be exact here because, again, we can... I'm going to show you how to, to change the shape and position and all that stuff. Now select the rainbow, and in order to use that, we're going to add a curve modifier. Pick the object, and now it's going around that curve. And because we gave it some geometry, we've got a nice soft curve along along the, uh, the Bezier circle there. All right, so even though this is now um, going around this curve, it's still holding on to those coordinates as part of the information on the rainbow itself. And to illustrate that, I'll hide this modifier. And there, we can see that if we want to control the length of this, I don't know if you can hear this background noise. I'm in the Chicago area, and there's like rain and snow and ice just pelting the window here. So if you can hear that, I apologize. But anyway... So we've got the x-axis to still control the length and the y-axis I can still control the uh, width. And that's important as we try to put this into the scene in the right place. So I'm going to unhide my modifier and uh, we still want this facing up here. So I'm going to rotate the circle itself, R, X along the x-axis, 90 minus to go in the other direction. Enter to lock that in. Now my rainbow is facing down. I don't want that to be the case. So all I need to do is in my curve modifier use the negative x deformation axis instead of x. And that's in the right direction. Alright, so I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. And I want my camera to use the front view as well. So in order to change that, control alt numpad 0 and it brings my camera to my current view. I'm going to select the edge of the camera and use G to grab it and move it so that I've got my rainbow right about the top of the frame. Again, just as a starting point so we can continue tweaking this a little bit. All right, so select the rainbow and let's, let's uh, finish up the materials. So Shift Z to go into render view. And I've got my red at the top, my lavender at the bottom, just what I need, just, just as my reference photo illustrates. And it's a little too bright, so I'm going to bring the brightness down about 0.6. And let's work on these edges. So in order to fix the edges, I want to mix my emission shader with a transparent shader. Shift A, add my transparent shader. And in order to mix these two together with a mix shader, the shortcut, if you don't know already, since I'm using Node Wrangler, I can hold down my Alt, right mouse drag those two together and it puts a mix shader in there for me. Now if you don't have Node Wrangler you need to get it. And I'm, I won't cover that here but uh, it's all over the place so uh, you'll find that. Yes that's my dog barking in the background. Great. Nothing but background noise here. Alright so I'm gonna use a gradient texture as my factor so I'm gonna shift A 
bring up a gradient texture and connect that into my factor now you can see right away it's using a gradient from left to right instead of top to bottom so in order to fix that I want to use my UV coordinates and feed those UV coordinates into the vector now I've got that gradient along the bottom perfect alright so let's, let's do the same thing to the top so to do that use a mix shader duplicate that with shift D feed my transparent shader into it also feed my gradient again into it but it used the same edge so in order to fix that all I need to do is drag these two nodes or this node down have them swap and now I've got that gradient hitting the top but the the line or the edge along the top and the bottom is it's soft but it's not quite soft enough so I want to change this gradient texture to use an easing type and that's a much much softer edge to that to that uh, rainbow top and bottom all right so I want to tweak this just with one more node and that is a transparent so let's duplicate shift D the mix shader bring the transparency in here and the reason I want to add this is because I just want to control the overall transparency of the rainbow itself and I'm not going to use the gradient texture to do that I simply want to use the factor to add transparency or reduce transparency just depending on the scene uh, that I'm trying to fit the rainbow into. We're at a point now that any other changes we want to make are really going to depend on what scene, what backdrop uh, we want to put the rainbow in. So let's go ahead and put a backdrop in and we can see how we might make those changes to fit that scene. Okay, so all I did was I brought in an old project of mine uh, and using the import images as planes add-on, another one that I hope you have. If you don't, you need to get that one as well. Uh, incredibly useful add-on. So I took the rendered version of a, an old project and um, just imported it on an image or Im imported it on a plane and then uh, went to material view so I could actually see the image on here. And I just want to use this as a backdrop so we can kind of walk through how we would tweak this rainbow in a scene. So I put that on layer two. If I, uh, here's everything on layer one that we've been working on. So if I hold down shift and click layer two, now I can have both of those in view. And then use uh, numpad zero to go to my camera view. And I'm gonna scale my background up. So select the plane, S, bring that up a little bit just to fill my camera view. And then now, if I hit shift C and look at my render, now I can see kind of what my rainbow would look like in this particular scene. So I'm not gonna have the flexibility that I would if I'd actually brought it into the 3D view. Maybe I want the one end of the rainbow going in front of this kind of mountain top here and then maybe behind this ridge over here. So obviously this I'm putting this in front of a, a plane so I can't treat it like it's 3D in this case. But let's just assume we want the rainbow to go all the way across the frame, just uh, in one edge, out the other edge and then see what that would look like. So to show we how we would go ahead and, and scale that out, I'm gonna hit Z to go into wireframe mode. I'm gonna select my rainbow and I'm also gonna select the, the circle. So hold down shift, select the circle, shift C to go back into render view, and then I'm gonna use S to scale it all the way out. And I'm gonna scale it until I see, it's gonna go out of frame, but I wanna make sure the ends of the rainbow are outside the, the frame. Those are well outside. So I'm gonna bring it down using G, Z along the Z axis, bring it down until it's back into my picture again. So I can see how it would kind of look. Now the first thing that is a problem is it's, it's just way too wide, but I can easily fix that. So if I hit Z to go back into wireframe, select only the rainbow, and since we're using the curve, the circle, to give it shape, I still am able to control the width using the Y axis. So in order to do that, I'm going to shift C back into render mode and hit S, Y to scale along the Y axis. And you can see it getting more and more narrow and now it's looking a little bit more proportionate to this scene. But it's probably a little bit too bright. So that's where this last mix shader comes in handy. So if I jack up my transparency using the factor, now it's a lot more realistic, a lot softer and more subtle in, in this particular scene, more like a realistic rainbow. But let's just say for the heck of it, 
we want it to be a circle and we want it to be a circle rainbow right around the sun. Let's see what that would look like. All right, so I'm gonna go back into wireframe mode. So hit Z. Once again, select both my rainbow and shift select my circle. And I'm gonna use the material view here so I can see my backdrop again and scale my circle and rainbow way down. Use G to grab it, bring it back up, center it right around the sun. Zoom in, scale it down a little bit more. Let's just say right about there. Now two things need to happen just by looking at this. I need to only select my rainbow and have it um, you know, go all the way around the circle and complete the circle. So, and again, I'm just gonna scale it along the X axis to increase the length. So S, X, complete my circle. And then I probably want it to be a little bit wider. So let's go ahead and widen it as well. S, Y to scale along the Y axis. And let's just see what that looks like right there. Shift C to see the render. And that's actually not bad at all. It's very, very soft, but that might be what you want. If you don't, then here we go and just change the transparency down a little bit more. And actually that looks a lot better. So if I zoom out, see what that looks like. That is pretty darn good. So again, you've got a lot of control this way, uh, circle, partial circle, whatever you wanna do. I can play not only with the transparency here, but you may even wanna play around with the emission uh, and the colors and, and bring in a little bit more orange, a little bit less blue, if that's what you're going for. A uh, lot of control over this. So yeah, there you go. Nice looking rainbow. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any suggestions for other videos, please leave them in the comments below and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.